Lego, my own train. A line of trains that are sought after by many. They made some of our childhoods. Only made for about three odd years. I always wanted them growing up as a kid in the early 2000s, but I never had any. So let's take a quick look at the range. Starting at the back of trains, a caboose. These cabooses retailed for $14.99 as best I can find. And kind of strangely, it's based on an American one from the 1910s. Then we have a log car, which was, correction, an open freight car, which retailed for $17.99. A tanker, an open hopper, both retailed for $20. And I must say, they all look really nice and are mostly based on European designs. They also have two coaches in this line of trains, but only one was available separately. We will look at that in a bit. For now, it was a green, generic-looking passenger car, which also retailed for $20. Technically, there are four locomotives in this series. A small and large steam locomotive that you have the option of giving a tender. They offered every engine and tender in five colors. Gray, brown, black, green, and blue. So in total, you could have 20 individual locomotives. How neat is that? Weirdly enough, whether the engine is bought separately or in a train set for $15 or $20 respectively, they all had the same number decals, 317. Not extremely relevant, just interesting nonetheless. The names of all these sets are pretty self-explanatory, but also kind of odd. You have the classic freight train set, simple enough, which is the only set that comes with a blue locomotive, tender, and two freight cars, and an oval track and controller. The express set, which is also unique in the fact that it has a different colored coach, being blue rather than green. The express deluxe set, which is strangely enough, as I've never seen an express train have logs on it, let alone be a mixed train. But hey, first time for everything. It's also strange that the deluxe set gets a standard green coach and not a blue one. This set also shares a neat addition in that it has a light powered by the track. The standard express set does as well, and I'm not really sure what makes this set a deluxe version, but hey, it's still neat. And the prices for all of these sets are $80 for the freight set, $160 for the express set, and $180 for the express deluxe set, respectively. So now that I've described everything in the range, what made it so great? Well, the customization. I could have a tank engine. I could have a tender engine. I could have it in five different colors straight from the factory. It's so lovely. Next, it's not region specific. The designs of the hoppers and cabooses admittingly are very German and American, but the design of the coach, the tank car, and the locomotives themselves, uh, they, they could be anywhere. Literally, they could be from anywhere. They don't look like any one particular prototype, and if you were to move the headlights on it, it could literally be an engine from Italy, Japan, uh, Germany, the British Isles, the American West, the steppes of Moscow, oh, wherever you I want it to be, <laughs> it can reasonably fit. It's just so nice. And the design of them is so simple. It's what a child would say a steam locomotive looks like. A boiler, a cab, a funnel, a tender, or maybe tanks. It's honestly astounding to me. Because if you look at it compared to the Emerald Knight, the Emerald Knight has a lot more parts and a lot more detail and stuff like that. And while it does look like a steam locomotive, I still prefer the my own train ones and I pine after them and not after the Emerald Knight despite both were released during my lifetime. Also, with the My Own Train line, since a lot of the detail on the engine is a sticker, theoretically, if you could get the bricks together, you could make this engine out of any color you wanted. 
which is something that really no other line of Lego trains you could really do. A lot of them have specific parts to them that only came in the one color that was in the set. But with these, if I got enough teal bricks together, I can make a teal locomotive. I can make a red one, a white one, a gold one if I wanted to, which actually does kind of sound like a good idea. I'm sure there's more rare Lego colors than that nowadays, but, but, but you get the point. Lastly, you have the ability to keep buying cars after your first train set. Modern Lego train sets, and I would say even the ones before the 9 volt to a certain extent, or maybe a better way of saying it is to a large extent, you couldn't do that. I know they had some packs and some individual cars, but for the most part, you could only buy the train sets, and if you wanted more of, let's say, the dump car from this set, you would have to buy another set. You couldn't just buy the car separately. But with the My Own Train stuff, you could. And I really like that because the hoppers were actually interactive in these. You could fill them up and then dump them out, which is, again, super cool. You can make your trains actually feel like they're hauling something. And it really helped make this line of trains feel like it was expanding the world of LEGO rather than being a gimmick in the world of LEGO and kind of like the one moving thing on your LEGO world. And of course, it would be a crime not to mention Turbo J UK immortalizing this line of trains. And with everything else being so great about them, why did LEGO stop making them? <laughs> Well, the downsides of the line are kind of the same as the upsides. It was hard to find what you wanted, especially as far as color of locomotive, and, well, they used the same box for every locomotive, whether you bought a green, blue, black, gray, etc. And that can be hard for a consumer to discern what they are actually buying, because the only way you could tell, also, if it had a tender or not, the only way you could tell is looking at the bottom of the box and seeing what is X'd off as this is inside of this box. And you also generally couldn't find the color you wanted, and LEGO did make uh, brick packs that could change the color of the locomotive. Although, strangely enough, they didn't give you new stickers, which I think is stupid. And I work in inventory control as my day job, and I understand, probably better than most, the hard part about keeping all of this in stock. Because LEGO probably has five VPNs or vendor product numbers, and oh. Target has one UPC that they sell all of it under. Oh, so okay. let's say they get a shipment of two green engines, two red engines, three black ones, and five gray, one brown. The one brown sells, and somebody comes to me and says, hey, I'd like one of the brown steam locomotives. And I say, oh, great, we have that UPC. I go over there and we don't have any because it's all sold under the same thing. And that can be very frustrating for customers. And based upon a lot of the marketing that I've been able to find for this line of trains, a lot of it was lego.com exclusive, which, I mean, I kind of get it was the early internet days, but it really hampered the line in the long run because it seemed like unless you wanted either a black or green steam engine, Everything had to be ordered online, which I think is very stupid, and I just don't quite get why you would do that. And I guess kind of that last part as well, the amount of stickers that were used on these models was also a bit of a downside, because you couldn't just build them out of standard Lego bricks. Nothing was printed on them, and they didn't use standard printed bricks, they used stickers. So if you build it without the stickers, it kind of looks off, it's just not the same. But thankfully now we can get reproduction stickers, so is that a downside? Eh, you be the judge of that. So while the My Own Train series will always hold a special place in my heart, not only for the Turbo J UK stuff, but also just because it was so neat looking and, well, it's from my childhood, so yeah, nostalgia factor. What do you all think? Was it LEGO's magnum opus for trains? Or do you much prefer the RC in the fact that it can go anywhere and have flexi track? Am I correct? Am I wrong? Do you think LEGO should bring it back? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, I will see you guys next time.